Can we, can we, as the Bible tells us, don't, don't have favorites. Love on the same. As much as you can, no favorites. Ephesians 6, 4. So next, next. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of interpretation. Liberty here. Fathers and mothers. Parents, don't exasperate your children. The fill in the blank is criticized minimally. Of course, we've all heard those studies that it takes ten good things to one bad thing. This mother shared with me how really the world is, is, is really critical enough for your children. The world will supply all of the criticism that child will most likely need. Not that you won't need to share a word of truth from time to time. Not that you won't need to say, wait, wait, come here. Come here. Every now and then. But can we can we keep it a, a minimum? And ladies, I'm preaching to myself as much as I'm preaching to you. Can we criticize minimum? Our next text is Psalm 1, 1 through 3. And I'm just going to share a very humbling moment. Shortly after I got here at Smithville, I met with the Mennonite women over uh, on, on a Tuesday. And uh, I remember it was around lunchtime, and they said, and now we're going to stand and say Psalm 1. Yeah. And they all stood up, and they said Psalm 1 beautifully as their pastor stood. Quietly <laughs> and in amazement, watch these sisters recite such a powerful song. These are the first three verses. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. In the center of that text, we hear about meditating on God's word. And I had a, a dear mother say simply two words, do devotions. Do devotions. I deeply appreciate so many of you that show up every Sunday as we open the Word of God. And as we, as we learn together what God wants to say to us on that particular day. But can I, can I just share something really, really heavy with you? If today is all you get of this, you're going to starve to death spiritually. And you're going to starve your children right along beside you. If today is the only day your children see you open up the Word of God, you're starving. This mom said, you know, we had children. We had a business. Things were busy. But we committed, we committed that at least once a day we would open the Word of God in front of our children. And we would share a word with them. And friends, I know, I know there are days that the Cheerios are flying, the milk has been spilled, and it's spilled again. And the orange juice is all over the place. But I believe so firmly that every seed that is planted, even the tiny seeds of God's Word, when you open it on a daily basis, will bear fruit. It can be new devotion. next text is Matthew 10 and 2, and I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles to that one. If you've got your Bible handy, if you don't have your Bible handy, there, should, there may be one, although I heard it got cleaned out last week. It's pretty good. Uh, there should be one on either end of your benches. Uh, we'll restock this week, but if you could open to Matthew 10, that would just be wonderful. I'm going to give our master of multimedia a little break. He's got the first couple of verses up there, but let's open to it. Matthew 10, 2. I'm actually going to read the whole list. 
Jesus. Matthew 10 is for you. Is able to find your Bible? I hear the pages turning. It's good. You'll get in there. It's a rather odd text for Mother's Day sermon, but well, there it is. Matthew 10 2, are you there? These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, who is called Peter, his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the mutual world. Now what in the world? What kind of list is that? It's a list that symbolizes how Jesus personified what one mom told me, and that is to love differently. Now I'm talking to a congregation who went through the love languages in a sermon series not so long ago. But the reality that we simply must love differently. If you'll notice in that list of disciples, you'll see Jesus had a tax collector and a zealot. The tax collector was a sellout to the Roman government. He was on the payroll. He, he had turned over to the folks who were oppressing. He was not liked by many, and especially not by the zealot. They say in order to become a zealot, you needed to kill a Roman or someone who was affectionate to the Romans. My hunch is Jesus needed to sleep between those two more than a couple times when they were out and about. But how in the world did Jesus manage to love those two? I believe it's because he loved differently. And this mom told me how sometimes the way you love a child is by getting on the floor and playing with them. And playing hard. And another child might need you just to, to cuddle for a little bit, to hold them. But can we try to love differently those children that we can give? Number nine comes from 1 John 3.16. 1 John 3.16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Film in blank number nine is just simply lay down. Mothers, I do hope at one point during this blessed day you'll have an opportunity to lay down. And maybe even drift off into blissful Sunday afternoon nap before you go to Palestine. But I think the mother that told me this spoke of laying down your life 